Funding for this program is made possible by Burke Nursery and Garden Center in Burke, Virginia. You'll find trees and shrubs, perennials and annuals, water garden supplies, houseplants, and bird and gardening supplies. Burke Nursery also provides landscape, plant diagnostic, and installation services, and much more. For more information, you can check out their website or call 703-323-1188. Welcome to Gardening with Burke Nursery, the show where we help you grow your garden and increase the curb appeal of your yard. I'm your host, Misty Kacheris, the horticulturalist at Burke Nursery and Garden Center. You know, when it comes to summer and the heat, especially here in Northern Virginia, I get a lot of questions about the best annuals to plant that can tolerate the heat, maybe even tolerate a little bit of drought or more drought than usual. The good news is that there are a lot of annuals for you to choose from. So join me as we enter the world of annuals, the sunny side. Annuals are wonderful plants. Yes, they only grow in one season, unlike perennials, which keep coming back year after year. But during that one season that they grow, they provide continuous color throughout the growing season. And this growing season is a lot longer than the flowering time period for most perennials. So a lot of these you can plant in spring, they'll go through the heat of the summer, and then they will die out with the first frost. But what you also get when you plant these perennials is you get this instant explosion of color that is so amazing. And with perennials, while you get color, often with perennials, there's a limited time period. The other thing that I like about annuals, a lot of people are now living in small spaces. So they may have a patio, they may have a deck, I have a friend who lives in a high-rise condo and she has a patio and she wants a garden too. As a matter of fact, with the flowers that she plants in her containers, she's able to attract hummingbirds and that's going to the seventh floor. So these plants are also a wonderful accent plant. If you have an area where you have trees or shrubs and you want a little more color than those shrubs provide. And of course, these annuals provide nourishment for our pollinators. As a matter of fact, when I put these plants in my car, I tried to make sure I didn't bring any pollinators with me, but when I opened my car door, a couple of the mason bees, mason bees are these tiny, tiny bees, and they actually are iridescent, and they look like iridescent little flies. And they just love pollinating our gardens and we find a lot of them here. So because there are so many annuals to choose from, I won't have time to share all my plants with you, but I do want to share some of my favorites. I'll also talk about how to care for them so they can continue to provide the best of show throughout their growing season. I'd like to begin talking about one of my favorite annuals. And actually, this annual seems to be the favorite of a lot of people. And this annual is the petunia. The petunia, I had to bring more than one just to show you. They are so fragrant. They are just phenomenal. You walk by and you can just smell and just enjoy the aroma. It's almost as if you're receiving aroma therapy. They attract hummingbirds. And part of the reason why they attract hummingbirds is if you take a look at their flower here, you'll notice that their flower is what I call a funnel or tubular flower. And the hummingbirds just love to be able to get their nectar from this. And to attract hummingbirds to my patio, I often use the petunia as a hanging plant, as a hanging basket plant. So there are different kinds of petunias. These are your 
average size. And here's another pretty one with the average size flower right there. And they can be either grow tall, grow erect, or they can grow as this one does in a cascading manner. And if they grow in a cascading manner, that means if you put it in a hanging basket, then it just hangs over and it's just beautiful. Also, you have this petunia, and this petunia has smaller flowers, half the size of your normal petunia flowers. Now, how do you care for them? Well, petunias are the kind of flowers that need a lot of water. So what that means is at least once a day, especially if they're in pots, go out, see if they need water. If it's a windy day and they're in hanging pots, you may actually have to water them two or three times during the day because wind whips the water and the moisture out of potted plants more than the sun evaporates the moisture out of potted plants. The other is these Petunias are hungry little things. They want food. And the best food is some form of liquid fertilizer. So you can put in a granular fertilizer, but because they would want to be fertilized once a week, you're better off going with the liquid. And what you want to do with this liquid fertilizer is you put a few drops of this liquid fertilizer in a watering can so that at least when you're watering, you can easily put that fertilizer into the plant and that's what the plant needs. The other thing that's important with a petunia, if you are going to use a fertilizer, please get a fertilizer where that first number is the highest because each fertilizer has three numbers. The first number is nitrogen, the second number is phosphorus, and the third number is potash. And the nitrogen goes to the bloom of the flower. The phosphorus, the middle number, goes to the roots. And then the last number is the general overall health of the plant. But these little babies they want that high level of nitrogen. And the other thing is that you need to do what is known as deadheading. Actually, I find deadheading very meditative and very reflective, and it was difficult not to deadhead these plants before the show, but I had to make sure I didn't deadhead them before the show so that I could show you how to deadhead them. So what you do is you look for a flower that looks like it's dried, it's wilted over, just kind of hanging in there, literally. And that means that it's time to get rid of this flower. And it's very simple with petunias, very easy. No scissors required. All you do is you just put your hand on the flower and just pull it, and that's, that's it. Just came off of my hand. If you don't deadhead your petunias, what will happen is that the petunia then thinks, oh, I'm done for the season. Okay, I don't have to flower anymore. And that's not what you want. You want that flower constantly. Now, and the next plant that I want to show you is the... Uh, I always have trouble pronouncing this, but that's okay. Calabrocoa is the name of the flower. Everybody thinks they're little petunias, and they're not. I mean, they kind of look like little petunias, and they come in amazing colors like petunias do, the pinks, the purples, the whites, the reds, and then I had to bring several because what's amazing is this one is just plain pink, but this one is pink with white, and this Calabrocoa actually has several colors. So it has purple and white, and it has 
pink and yellow, all in the same flower. Just amazing. And the nice thing is, even though, like the petunia, it needs the water, and even though, like the petunia, it's also real hungry, so please, once a week, liquid fertilizer with that high first number so you get more nitrogen. Also, just like with the petunia, go out at least once a day to make sure that it's moist. If it's in a hanging basket, and these definitely cascade. That's the only habit that they have when they're growing. They like to cascade. So oftentimes, these are really pretty in a pot around the edge of the pot. Definitely a, one of my little favorites because I do like those tiny little flowers. The next flower that I want to talk about definitely loves the drought. The hotter, the better. And this is the vinca. So let me move these calibracoas out of there. And let me move these petunias out of here. And some people actually think that the vinca is a petunia, but it's not. The vinca is so well loved by butterflies, where the petunia, this little flower fell off, so that really helps to show you. This is your tubular flower. That's the petunia. The vinca, meanwhile, has a flat flower. So it's flat. And butterflies love flat flowers because they can land on them, they can light on them. And vincas love drought. They don't like a lot of water. They love the hottest, sunniest location you can find, whether that's in a pot or in the ground. Vincas, because they like the heat so much, actually make a wonderful, what we call, border plant in your garden. That means putting it right at the edge, because they only get about one foot tall. So this one here is basically about the height of the vinca. And not only are they attracted to butterflies, but they're also deer less eaten. So yes, there are some annuals that the deer don't find quite as appealing. And as always, I like to repeat this little information. If the deer are hungry, they will eat anything, which is why I call it deer less eaten. And this is what is considered a medicinal plant. According to the North Carolina State University, the chemical compounds in this plant, I, I find this amazing. I, I just, uh, the botanical remedies out there in the world are just amazing. But this vinca actually led to the breakthrough in the treatment of modern day cancer patients. Can you imagine that? Just phenomenal. Oh. And there is another form of, another plant called vinca, and that is a vine. They are not related in any way. This one is unfortunately sometimes called periwinkle, just like the vinca minor and vinca major, which are your vines. But this is the Madagascar periwinkle because it originated in Madagascar. Just Love that vinca. Now, this next plant, the pronunciation of this next plant is different. Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing about vinca when I talk about the cure. You don't have to deadhead this. Oh, and you didn't have to deadhead the calibracoas. Those don't need deadheading. These basically will take care of themselves. Don't 
over fertilize them. They do not, the vincas do not need a lot of fertilizer. So I recommend using, if you listen to that sound, a granular fertilizer. Be and this is a slow release granular fertilizer. And I recommend just fertilizing it once when you planted it initially, then you can forget about fertilizing it for the rest of the season. Now, this one. Savola, I may have started mentioning this, is not pronounced as spelled. So it is spelled S-C-A-E-V-O-L-A. -E but it's pronounced Savola. So somewhere it's like, as opposed to Scivola. When I first saw these plants, and let's see, I think this is a good one to show. I thought that I found a plant that has some kind of problem, some kind of defect. Because if you look at this plant and you look at those petals closely, what you will see is that the petals don't go around in a circle as they do on most flowers. Instead, what they do is they only go halfway. And then I found out, oh, wait a minute. This plant is also called a fan flower because the flowers, the petal heads, resemble fans. And it's extremely drought tolerant. Also, not only is this plant drought tolerant, but this plant is also extremely heat tolerant, just like your vinca. And this plant likes acidic soil. The vinca doesn't care what kind of soil it gets. This kind of leans more towards the acidic. It'll tolerate other soils. And here in Northern Virginia, with all our clay, of course, we have the acid. So the cebolas are very, very happy. Again, butterflies love them, bees love them. They're anywhere from six inches to 14 inches tall. You can find them in purples, lavenders, violets, whites, pinks. And they also, you, fertilizing you can go two ways. You can either start the season with a slow release fertilizer, the granular that I showed you, or what you can do is you can fertilize every week with a liquid fertilizer. And these plants are actually from Australia. A lot of people are still being introduced to this plant, but this is really a nice plant to have. The next plant that I'd like to talk about is the gazania. The gazania is also known as the African daisy or called the treasure flower. This is a really interesting plant. Technically, it is not in the daisy family, but that's okay because it looks like daisy. I mean, just take a look at those flowers. Just amazing. And what I love about them is that they are daisy shaped. So of course, the butterflies love it. They can land on it. The bees, pollinators all love this flower. It has, the, this particular one has the white with the little purples in the center. So that's nice. And actually this morning when I first got up and went to bring the plants here, I thought, oh dear, I maybe should have taken a picture of this African daisy. The reason is that at nighttime, the daisy closes, the African daisy, the garzania, closes her leaves, or her petals rather, not the leaves, the leaves stay the same, but closes the petals. And so this morning, when I got up, the petals were all closed, and actually, it was very, very cloudy, and not all the petals opened. At least one did, so that you can see how they are. 
And actually, it's nice that nature is showing us what they look like when they're closed. So that's kind of a nice little thing. The other is for the reason that these petals close is the reason you do not want to plant this in the shade. Otherwise, what you'll have is you'll have a plant that kind of looks interesting, but not really like a daisy, because even in the shade, and that's why these petals haven't opened up, because we're inside the studio here, and we're not getting regular sunlight, so the only flower that stayed open was the one that fully opened before I brought it to the studio, and the rest are saying, nope, we're not going to. You can't tell in this pot, but actually these plants get up to 18 inches, and they're very, very drought resistant. That means that you don't need to worry about how much water you're gi giving them. They do need to be deadheaded though. And deadheaded in this case, and I'm not going to do it quite with this plant, but I am going to show you what you would do if you had to deadhead this, which is you have the stem here, and you would go all the way down to the base of the stem, right here, and then you would cut that right at the base. And that's how you need to deadhead these. You don't cut them at the top with the flower. And the reason you don't cut them up here is that if you cut them up here, you've created an open wound that's very difficult for the plant to heal from, and with that open wound, you could get an infection that settles into the plant through the rest of the stem, where if you cut at the base, then what happens is that the plant can heal itself naturally and say, okay, I've got the whole season to keep blooming. This is wonderful. If you have a bright sun house, as I like to call it, meaning a lot of windows, a lot of southern exposure, you can actually grow this indoors as a house plant. And you can take the leaves or the stem and actually put it in water if you want and then reroot it that way. The next plant that I want to show you is the lantana. And the lantana is really another plant that just attracts butterflies, attracts hummingbirds. It loves acidic soil, and in your warmer zones, it's actually a shrub. It comes in so many different colors. And this particular color, the orange and the red color, that is known as ham and eggs or bacon and eggs in some areas because of the red and the orange color being the same plant. In our area, this is, while it can grow very tall, it doesn't make it through the winter. So we, in our area, this is not really a shrub per se. It is an annual in our area being zone 7A here in Northern Virginia. Does not like to be fertilized. So please keep the fertilization very minimal, because if you fertilize this too much, you won't get flowers, you'll get a lot of leaves, but you won't get the flowers. And this is also deer less eaten. So the next plant that I want to talk about is the portulaca. And I'll tell you, I have so many plants, I even brought some extras here, and I can see I'm beginning to run out of time, so We'll just focus on this as our last plant for the day. And the portulaca is a phenomenal plant. It is what we call a succulent. Very drought tolerant, does not like a lot of water. Too much water can actually damage the plant. And like the garzinia that I spoke about earlier, the African daisy, these leaves also close up at night. And the first time I saw that, I didn't realize. I went, oh my gosh, what just happened to my plant? And even though this is an annual, this can be what we call self-sowing. It grows so many roots that if I were to cut a piece of this porch lacquer off and just 
throw it anywhere where there's a teeny bit of dirt or soil, excuse me. So like in a rock garden where you just have a little bit of soil peeking out from those rocks, it will start sprouting roots and it will grow again. Not from this plant in that sense, this plant will die back, but on the other hand, the plant can overwinter. So yeah, we can call it an annual and it fits in the annual category, but it actually can come back every year. And weird as it sounds, when you look at it, butterflies love it. It also, by the way, can be called the sun rose or the moss rose because of its habit. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining me as I share some of my favorite annuals. They love the sun, they enjoy the heat, and many of these annuals even enjoy the drought. If you have any questions about these plants or any plants for your garden, just contact me at misty at burknursery.com. I'm your host, Misty Kacheris, and I'd like to thank you for spending your time with me here at Gardening with Burke Nursery. I'm looking forward to helping you grow your garden. Funding for this program is made possible by Burke Nursery and Garden Center in Burke, Virginia. You'll find trees and shrubs, perennials and annuals, water garden supplies, house plants, and bird and gardening supplies. Burke Nursery also provides landscape, plant diagnostic, and installation services, and much more. For more information, you can check out their website or call 703-323-1188.